Hi everyone, it's Brittany and I am here today to um, show you guys some cool stuff with using the new Pantone uh, bead strands from Jesse James Beads. I'm just going to wait a little bit so we can have more people join us. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. It's very sunny here in Arizona. It's 85 degrees and I'm happy. <laughs> Hello. Just waiting for a few people to join. Hi, everybody. Let me see if I can get the chat to pull up. Hi, everybody. Hi, Donna. Hi, Katie. I'm gonna be working with the new Pantone strands today. They're super pretty. Hi, Rosanna. Again, <laughs> hi Donna. Hi mom, <laughs> my mom's here guys. <laughs> hi Renee, how's everybody doing? Hi Debbie. Hello, is it Cara? I'll just wait a couple minutes for some people to join. Hi Wendy. Hi Trudy, good to see you too. Hi, hi Debbie, hi Sophia. Um, today I'm gonna be using some of the new Pantone strands. I have kind of a plan <laughs> for one piece and then I think we'll just wing it with the rest because these are so beautiful. I think we'll just come up with some, maybe some easy earrings on the spot. Um, hi Pam. Hi Carol. Uh, I'm gonna switch my camera. Please pardon the mess, my desk is crazy. I still haven't gotten an uh, assistant. <laughs> so let me switch this down. Hold on one second and zoom in a little bit. Okay guys, so as you can see I have quite a few strands here and I'll kind of tell you what they are and then I'll tell you what I have in mind and then we'll see what we end up with. Thanks Debbie. I'm going to try and scooch in a little bit. Oh, yeah, there we go. Can you guys see okay? Is everything lit up well enough? Hi, everybody. Okay, sorry for the wiggling. I'm just trying to get my um, tripod to cooperate. Okay, so I have an idea to make a sunset bracelet. So here in Arizona, we have these amazing, fantastic, breathtaking sunsets almost every day. And I just, I looked at these new strands from Jesse James Beads um, using the Pantone 2021 colors, and they reminded me of an Arizona sunset. So this first one, um, and uh, oh hi Brittany <laughs> um, this first one is burnt coral and marigold and it's got so they have uh, two of the colors on each one of these strands they're duos um, this one is amethyst orchid and raspberry sorbet and that might be backwards so purples and then this one's rust this is my favorite one out of all of them which is surprising because there were some blue and green ones and most of you who know me know that i love turquoise but out of all of the strands this one just made me so happy so we'll probably end up using quite a bit of this strand today but i also have some anti-copper findings and um, beads and bead caps from the avocado on everything mini mix and then there's also another there's another bead mix that has two of the Pantone colors in it, illuminating, and I can't remember what the, the gray one was called. So I picked out just a couple beads from this to start our sunset because the sun, we want to, you know, use some yellow to represent the sun, right? So I don't really have it planned out yet, but we'll, we'll get started. Um, I'm also going to be using a toggle clasp uh, in like a bronze color. This is actually, it says bronze, but it's really like an antique copper. It's really pretty. And it, I thought it re went really well with the antique copper on this rust strand. So um, I think at the beginning of our bracelet, I'm going to use some of this yellow. 
and um, I was fortunate enough, I am a subscriber of the mystery box, so I got some of these yellow um, boho beads in the January mystery box. These are also, two of these are also in this large mix. So I'm gonna start with one of these, and I'm gonna set two aside for maybe some matching earrings for later on. So, all right, so I'm gonna start at the front. I'm gonna just start designing in a line, and then that's how I usually start, is just kind of go in a line, and then figure out where I want everything to go, and then we'll string. Yeah, I think the clasp is really gorgeous, Renee. Okay, I'm gonna cut open my strands. It's always painful <laughs> for me to cut open a Jesse James bead strand because it's so pretty. You could just stick this right on a necklace just like itself. So I want the yellow to go into the um, burnt coral and marigold, and then we'll go into the rust, and then we'll go into the purple that's gonna sig uh, signify the dusk or night. So we're going from daylight into nighttime with this sunset bracelet. So I am going to cut this open. And I really, really, really loved how they put these two Hishi beads and a spacer bead right in the middle. I'm gonna use that from now on. I really love that idea. I have a ton of Hishi beads and just stacking these together is just so innovative to me. So I'm gonna set those off to the side. I'm not sure I'm gonna use them. I for sure want to use this boho bead. I might wanna use this crackle glass. Um, I'm not going to be using the cage bead, although I really love that this cage bead has um, a bead that has a hole in the middle because it I can string it. I can't really string very well with the other cage beads. Um, those are better for like charms. Um, I'm going to set most of these beads aside, but I'm going to grab this other boho bead that has the shell on it. I know I want to use those three from this strand. I'm going to put the rest of the strand aside. I don't think I'm going to use it, but I might use some of these heishis. We'll see. Next, we're going to open our rust strand. Thanks, Marianne. Hi, Gail. Um, okay, so I'm just going to move these so you can still see them, but out of my way for a second. And then um, I'm actually going to be using a lot of the metals on here too. I might only use one or two of the beads, but I really, really love the spacers and the bead caps on here. So I know I want to use one of these. It's my favorite bead right now. I just love how um, eclectic this bead is. I'll put this towards this side. And I'm counting on the antique copper and the antique brass to pull together the entire look on this bracelet. So I might have to go this way because my screen is not very wide. <laughs> All right, I'm going to spill this out. I always keep the under beads. I never know what I'm gonna need them for, but in one of my last videos, they really came in handy too. And I know I want to use one of these pearls. I really love these, um, I don't even know what to call them. They're like wheel beads almost with crystals wrapped around the outside. I think those are so cool. I think we're gonna have to incorporate one, at least one of those. And um, I wanna make sure I get a little pile of the metal off to the side so we can work that in. And I'm going to treat these crystals as if they're metal because they're the same tone as the metal on the bracelet. So if I need, I can um, use those throughout the bracelet. Okay, I'm gonna put these guys to the side because I know I won't use those. We'll figure those out in a minute. And then open my last strand. My favorite beads on the strand before I get them all wonky are these rectangles. I just think they're so neat. And just look at look at how sparkly those are. And then this guy right here. Those on top of these would make really cute earrings too. Okay, I know I for sure wanna use the rectangle in my bracelet. I think I want to use this really nice purple bead. It's, um, it looks like chain wrapped around a 
um, a core. I'm not going to use silver, so I'm going to set aside my silver beads. And I think I want to use this guy too to transition into our bracelet. Okay. So I know it doesn't look like much yet, <laughs> but I am going to scooch out just a little bit so we can see. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. So we'll start. I always like to start a bracelet where I'm using a toggle with a small bead at the end. And the reason I want to do that is because the toggle needs to be able to come through the opening. And um, sometimes, more often than not, the bead that it's connected to has to go through the toggle as well. So if we put a large bead up against the end of this toggle, it wouldn't be able to go through the middle of our, our heart. Therefore, we wouldn't be able to actually like close our bracelet. So I want to make sure this yellow bead goes through our heart and good thing I checked because it doesn't. <laughs> so we want to start with possibly a smaller spacer bead at the end or a piece of chain or actually I'll use I'll end up using um, a jump ring which normally I don't use. I usually just connect right to um, the toggle but in this case we'll need a jump ring that's a little bit smaller. Than our bead. So I'll go ahead and just close this. I'm not stringing right now, but I'm glad we checked. So we'll know for when it's um, time to, to crimp. Let's close up that jump ring. That jump ring actually came with these, this toggle. Okay. So put that in there. Now I have to decide on my order of my beads and then how I'm going to put um, work in some of the copper, sorry. And we'll start with, for sure, one of these yellow beads. I think we're just gonna stay with one for now. And then move into our orange, our marigold and burnt coral. And then we'll work into our rust colors. So I'm using just about two of each color until I get the purple. I'm gonna use three for purple. And actually now that I'm looking at it, this guy just doesn't gel as well with the rest of the beads because it's flat and it's a little wider. So what I'll do is I'm gonna grab one of these smaller purple beads. Hey, Jesse James beads. We're making a um, sunset, Arizona sunset bracelet using three different duo strands just to catch up Jesse James beads. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and put this purple at the end. And now that I have my order of my beads, I'm going to tie those together by incorporating the same color um, um, same color metal here. Even though there are some other metals throughout the bracelet, this is what's going to tie it all together. Okay, so I see some nice saucers. I love this bead. It's so ornate and intricate. I really love that. Oh, they were at the benefit for the boulder shooting. Oh, thanks for going to that. going to put this guy I think right here for now I really like this bead but I want to tie in more of the darker color so I'm going to instead of having the silver or the bright gold show there I'm going to tie it together with a bead cap so I'm just going to intersperse some of our antique copper throughout here and I think what we'll do is use the same technique on the purple bead down here because it has a silver top. Yes, I, I will always say I love, love, love Jesse James beads um, medals. They are amazing. Okay, so we started at the end with our jump ring and I have a couple spacers here. 
think we'll put these guys right there. Sorry if you're just outside the screen. And then I love these. So I'll put them. Hmm. Oh, I think one would go really well next to this purple bead. And I think one would go really well next to this orange bead. And then we got to work in one of these guys because they're so unique. I think it'll look really nice between these two. And then I think, ooh, I like these little orange beads. I think we need to incorporate one of these in here too. So I'm going to put it next to our crystal, our two boho beads. We don't have two bohos right next to each other. And I think I'll work one of these in from the avocado and everything mini mix. So I know it looks a little mumbo jumbo right now, but I'm gonna start stringing and hopefully it'll start coming together for us. So I'm going to start at the purple end. And I am going to, I might need to put a bead, um, a spacer bead at the other end, but we'll see once that comes up. I'm going to start with our dark purple crystal. This is one of my favorite beads that I've gotten. Um, with these strands, it's just so sparkly. And then we'll put on our bead caps. And I think we'll go, yeah, we're gonna put a spacer between, even though we have a bead cap on there, I think we're gonna go spacer again, just to break up the purple a little bit. And then um, this guy has bead caps on him, so I don't need a spacer between the purple and the rest. And this is a hollow bead, so you just have to take your time to get that through there, and it, look, it works out fine. Jesse James beads, we were talking about these beads earlier, and we love them because the bead inside has a hole, so we can strand it on a necklace or a bracelet instead of just hanging like a charm. So if you guys make more of those, we've been, we said uh, we would love more holes in the middle. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and strand on our really unique crystal beaded bead spacer. Um, our pearl, our intricate antique copper bead. This one's also um, a little bit hollow, so like it's just hollowed out in the middle, so make sure you're just taking your time. Put this guy on here. There you go. So I'm on the East Coast. Where is everybody else from today? So here's our bracelet so far. Thanks, Donna. Can I get? Nebraska, oh my goodness, we have people all over. Santan Valley, Noel, I live in Phoenix. Um, Georgia, Delaware, we do really have everybody. South Carolina, I hope everybody's okay and safe from storms. Northwest, oh yeah, Rosanna, Pittsburgh. Okay, so Here's our bracelet so far. I'm going to measure because I'm not 100% sure that this is long enough for me. Um, but look, so far we've gone from the sunshine 
into um, the start of our um, sunset, getting into the burnt um, oranges, and then into the purple of the night. So I'm really, really loving this this bracelet so far. It's so pretty. Um, oh, Susie, I'm in Phoenix too. And then we have people from um, Michigan. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to, you're not going to see anything for a second. I'm just going to measure this on my wrist. I misplaced my um, ruler, which is not surprising since I live, my I, my bead desk is a hot mess. <laughs> All right, so I need a couple more inches at least on here. So what I'm going to do, thanks Donna, and uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of take a quick look, see where we can um, insert some more colors or some more beads or we even just put in a couple more spacers so I can absolutely put on another one of these yellow crystals maybe mix in another one of these but I probably want to get another big big bead in there so it can take up real estate this might be this is something that you also want to think about if you're using bigger chunkier beads you're gonna to have to make your bracelet longer than you normally would because the inner diameter of the bracelet is smaller than, you, than it normally would be with smaller beads. So, okay, I'm going to absolutely add another one of these yellow beads here. I need a bead, um, I need a spacer that'll work there. Maybe we'll use two of these bead caps. I think that'll be really pretty. And that'll be a nice end to the bracelet there. And then um, we can fit in Maybe another pearl on this side and I can put another crystal over here and then I'll just make sure that I grab some more spacers oh and we could put in one of these I said earlier we we're gonna use this as a metal color and not just a bead so okay I want I'm going to cut this off of my spool normally I keep my wire on my spool because it only makes I only have to worry about one side coming undone but whenever I take something and I'm not using that end I always put a clamp on it because I've lost my projects too many times <laughs> so okay I'm definitely going to take off these beads right here I want to make sure that I keep them in the right order though so I'm gonna move all these out of the way And I'm going to put, thanks, um, I'm going to put, Sarah, is that you posting as Jesse Jane Speeds? I didn't see if you said it. Um, the, the pearl here. Oh, this wire is 19 strand beadalon. Gold. There we go. Sorry, I didn't say that earlier. Okay. So we have our, nut, our pearl on there. I'm going to put um, a spacer in there. Put our purple crystal, the spacer. We'll get back to our um, chain bead and then I'm going to add another one of those darker crystals right here before I go into the rectangle and I'm going to put another one of these mm, actually I want to see what that looks like up against the rectangle because it's circle in the middle it might not work very well yeah, it doesn't really work very well, but that's okay. I'm going to end up using one of these. Thanks, Noelle. I, right when I saw these three strands together, I was like, oh, 
Arizona sunset. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and I, I've changed that end to incorporate more purple and more um, rust. And I'm just gonna go in, I'm actually gonna measure this on my wrist one more time. And I think I don't need to add another one of these orange crystals. I'm just going to add another one of these yellow crystals to the other side and I should be okay. Okay, so since I'm not working on this end anymore, I'm making sure to clamp it. And then I decided I was going to use a um, bead cap, then my yellow crystal, then another bead cap. And um, I don't think I have another smaller copper bead, but you can also, if you need to, you can also use a crimp cover if you need it as a bead. Just close it up and slide it on your wire. And I think that's what I'm going to do just to create a little bit of a smaller lead in to our jump ring for what we discussed so our um, toggle can make it through our heart. So I'm just gonna close up this crimp cover. Hi, Michelle. Thanks, Janet. And just, you don't want to kind of pinch it all at once. Just keep going at it. And uh, that's what I always say, take your time. <laughs> there are quick projects, but if you want it to make, make sure that it stays on your wire as a bead, just make sure you, you do it very slowly. I think I crushed this one a little bit too much. There we go. Yeah, I think I crushed that one. I have one more. I'm going to use my crimping pliers because they're a little bit more precise. Okay. Here we go. a little harder because there's not a crimp in there holding it apart but I think we got it so I'm gonna slide that on or maybe not there we go again it's hollow so you kind of have to work it onto the string there we go Okay, so we have one little tiny bead at the end. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp this onto my, um, actually, we're gonna go ahead and put the jump ring onto the toggle first. Normally, like I said earlier, I usually just crimp right onto the toggle. However, we just need a little bit of a smaller space between here and the next bead. So that's why we're using the jump ring. Okay, so I have a crimp bead. I have the toggle, I love this toggle. Oh, I didn't close that jump ring right. I always want to make sure those line up. There we go. Tina, which tool? This one? It's Beetle on um, double, it's got two different um, pliers on it, so you don't have to keep putting down pliers and picking them up. Okay, so then we put it through our jump ring and then we put it back through our crimp bead. 
And while crimping, we just want to make sure that both and uh, both wires are not crossed. So you have a couple options because normally crimp beads are pretty small. You can just flat crimp and it will hold your bracelet together. It's going to be fine. But I'm going to um, use the uh, folding crimp method today. So I just use the first valley in my crimp pliers, making sure that those wires are not crossing. And then I squeeze. And then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees, walk it up to the next valley, and then we're just going to keep pressing all the way up. And I will grab a crimp cover. And I'll slide that over my crimp bead. If you don't have crimp covers, it's okay. Nobody's going to grab your wrist unless you're a crazy person like me and ask you <laughs> where your crimp cover is. Usually if I grab somebody's wrist, it's because I want to know where they got their bracelet. <laughs> I don't really do that anymore, but I have been known to do that to friends in the past. So we'll go ahead and finish crimping off the other side. Um, I do slide my wires back through some of the beads just to give me... If, if I end up having to crack off that crimp, I won't have to, because I messed up the way the bracelet's made or something like that, I won't have to restrand everything. Um, I can just pull this little bit of wire out and fix my bracelet. Now, some people don't do that. That's totally fine. I'll end up cutting off the excess wire in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to go down the other end. Hi, Jessica. And I kind of want to let's see, did I totally destroy this guy? I think I did. Oh no. Mm. I think we'll be okay without um, a copper bead on the end because what I'll end up doing is just putting on the crimp bead and the crimp cover over here so the copper bead will be. Um, duplicated on this side. So I'm just going to string it right on to our crimp bead and then right on to our heart piece of the toggle. I think Jesse James Beads has these heart toggles in three different colors. Okay, so then we'll go back down through our crimp bead and I'm gonna go through a couple beads to get some tension to help me crimp a little bit better so I'll grab go through my crystal some spacers and down through this guy and then I think we'll be okay all right so we have and don't worry that silver will be held in place once we have our bracelet all together. Um, so what I like to do when I finish my pieces is make sure your bracelet isn't in a straight line. If you crimp while your bracelet's in a straight line, you're gonna be a very unhappy camper at the end of making your bracelet. So I'm just, what I do is call Lucy Goosey and leave it in um, a curved formation with a necklace, with a bracelet, whatever you're making, and pull this. So make sure there aren't too many um, pieces of wire showing between your beads. You want it tight, but you don't want it to be ramrod straight. You just want it to be making sure that there's enough room on your bracelet for all the beads. And that's it. So I have it pretty tight. I'm going to create a little bit of slack here so I can crimp without cracking my crystal. And if you need to, if it's a lot easier right here, if you can only get in here with your the tips of your crimps, just flat crimp it. It's totally fine. I'm going to do that because I'm really worried that I'll crack my crystal, which I did on camera the other day. <laughs> so I'm just going to flat crimp that. And then I'm going to grab a crimp cover. Hi, Lisa. We're glad you're here. Hi, Marie. And... Oh, I'm sorry, my light came to say hello to you guys. <laughs> it's 
sorry about that. Okay, grab our crimp cover. Locate our crimp. Slide it over and then just close it. Okay, so we're good there. And now we're gonna trim off the wires. Make sure you only trim the one that has a tail because I've done that on camera before too and I um, cut the main wire of my bracelet. Oh, thanks, Trudy. Okay, so because we put this um, jump ring here, we were able to get our toggle through. If we hadn't, we would have had an issue. <laughs> but here is our bracelet. So this is what I'm calling our Arizona sunset bracelet. We're going from day right into night. And I just love it so much. Oh, my goodness. What do you guys think? Those colors from the Pantone duos are amazing. Okay. So I think we still have some time, guys. We still have quite a bit of time, and I opened a bunch of beads here. I think we should just do some really quick earrings using some of these bead strands. Um, yeah, I really love it. Thank you, guys. You guys are all so sweet. But I did, did I pull off the sunset look, you think? Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put that right there so we can all watch it uh, be up there and pretty. But um, let's see what else we can do here. I just, these are from the um, illuminating. And uh, Sarah, what's the, the gray color? I can't remember. That's in this mix. These are the lightest yellow that were in there. And I just love, love, love them. And they're so yummy. Thank you guys, you guys are so sweet. So I wanna make some earrings using these, but I also saw these, I love these um, yellows. 2021 is the year of yellow, and I think Jesse James Beats did a really good job with that this year. So I love these. Um, another strand, I'm missing one of the strands, oh no, oh here he is, okay. That I really, really loved was this blue one. And I love this guy. And I think these two look so fantastic together. I just don't know how to fix, how to do it. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I, while we're making something else, I wanna think about how to use this yellow with the blue to create something else. So we'll kinda keep that in our field of vision so we can brainstorm. Thanks, Holly. No worries, Nancy, you can catch the replay later. <laughs> so we're gonna make a pair of earrings. The first thing I think I wanna do is make an, a pair of earrings from these because they're my favorite beads out of the entire Pantone collection this year. And um, I just love they're so um, eclectic. I just love that and I don't know, I don't know if I have another one of these. But that's okay because I think it's a little big. Let's see. I love this rust with this green teal. I think what we're gonna do is just make a quick pair of earrings featuring these crystals. And our, I don't know if these are boho beads, but they're really, really pretty. They're just my favorite. I just love them so much. Um, and maybe a couple of these guys. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a head pin. Sorry guys, one minute here. And actually, oh! You know what, I have these wonderful tiara cast items that I kinda wanna work into something too. So, the smaller coral, these, are these what you're talking about, Donna? I have these from Beadalon. Okay. 
think we'll get a little bit of color mixing for metals, but I think it'll be nice because it has a ball on the end. So you think the smaller coral, let's see how that looks. Oh, I do like how that looks. Okay. Need a different head pin. This the copper isn't working perfectly for me. There we go. There we go. I have really long ones too. Sorry for the camera there. There we go. That's much better. All right, so you're saying the coral, which I can get behind. I need a smaller bead to kind of block the bottom because these holes are large and my head pin will go right through there. It's a little crazy. That's a little bit much. Okay, so I don't have a bead, a small enough bead that will prevent the bottom of the bead going through my head pin. So I'm trying to think about what we could do here. Oh, well, actually, maybe we can we can work it out. Yeah, we have some nice to hear our cast spacers here. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna do this guy and then we'll just do a simple loop or actually I won't do a simple loop at the top I will uh, wire wrap the top of this stay with me guys <laughs> But that's okay, I can slide them back on. Don't worry. It's because I was pulling really hard. Okay. So we have him on there like that. We'll cut that off. Goodness. Today's not working with the earrings. We did so well with the bracelet that everything else is kind of going sideways. <laughs> so we have one here. I'll do another one to make sure that we have one that stays together. And then I am going to wire wrap on a sandwich between um, the coral bead and two of these spacers.
yes the t the the screen is this way it's vertical So we have a nice link here. I'm going to redo this guy. Hopefully I can find one that will be large enough to go through our bead. To not go through our bead, I should say. Hmm. Here we go. And I'm not going to wire wrap, I'm just going to do simple loop. Yeah, normally I would plan this out a little bit better, but these head pins are just not the best and they're not going to be working they're not they're not beetle on they're generic head pins that are just too small of ends to stay in a boho bead so anyway my idea or our idea i think was to connect our earring like this and i think that would have been really cute so what i'll end up doing guys is i'm going to save this video and i'll add on to it on my youtube channel <laughs> But, oh yeah, that's a good idea, Cynthia. You can also, she just said she, you can cut off the end, do a little, a little spiral. And you can even turn it flat to be against the bead. So that's a really good idea. Thank you, Cynthia. Pull this guy out, go through our bead. And you can keep it like this. You can just use an eye pen too if you want to. I'm going to turn that in just a moment. Um, and then I'm going to cut this. I'm just going to do a simple loop. that up slip on our little crystal sandwich close up our simple loop and then actually one of the other things that came in here what do we think about that that would be really cute too to put on our loop at the bottom so didn't really go where I wanted it to but with your help, it turned out really cute. If we can get this open. So we have this really pretty Tierra cast charm. Our little head pin turned eye pin. And then our um, crystal sandwich. So I know I have, um, I know I had some ear wires. I thought that would be really cute. Oh, here they are. And then we kind of just open up our earring a little bit. Actually, it's already open, but slide that guy on there. I think it's going the right way. It is. And then just close this up. These are also tiara cast. And they come in a nice kit with um, a toggle. 
So there's a really funky, fun earring. Thanks for saving the day, Cynthia, <laughs> to kind of revamp the earring. But I think that's really pretty. What do you guys think? And it goes really nice with our sunset bracelet. Okay, and well, let's just do one more earring. Um, let's see. I really, really, really loved these two together. We've got a um, beautiful rectangle purple and a nice um, crystal. It's a round, but it's also kind of a spiral so I'm gonna do something I mean we could just do um, an eye pin and a head pin but I am gonna grab some 20 gauge or even 22 gauge wire um, I'm just gonna grab German style wire let me find it here and I'm just gonna grab some silver wire This is Beetalon German style wire. I'm just gonna cut a length off. I always cut more than I need because I'm worried that I'm gonna run out of the wire. And I'm gonna grab my bottom piece here. Okay. And I can do a wire wrap this way. We'll bring it up the back of our bead okay so there we go and then um, we'll make one straight I'm just gonna make the longer one straight I cut way too much and then I will wrap one wire around the other now you can use your um, pliers to do this I'm just gonna use my fingers And since the one that's coming out, um, actually I want this to be a little bit longer here. There we go. It's about halfway. So we'll go up and then I'm going to come around my wire, the one that's hanging out of the bead or coming out of the top of the bead. And I'm going to wire wrap around that. Just a couple little. There we go. There we go. So then I'm going to snip that off in the back. And if if this is a little loose like that, moving around, all you need to do is grab your uh, pliers and give a little crook in the wire and it tightens it right up. So that guy's not going anywhere now. He's not moving around. So now we have a beautiful, you can use this as a head pin on something to make a pendant, but I'm just gonna use this as the bottom of my first earring. Okay, and I am going to just make a loop. it all the way around grab on and wire wrap that you can make it messy you can make it super coiled and tight just gonna go around a couple times there we go so Fix that right up and snip off in the back. Okay, so there's the bottom of our first earring. And then if you want, you can, um, depending on the orientation of the top bead, just twist the, the loop to face forward or sideways. I'm just gonna do it forward like that. There you go. And I am going to cut another length of our wire. This one doesn't have to be nearly as long. So 
especially since our rectangle is so tiny. Stick that in there. And then we're just gonna create a loop like we did for the other bead. This one is just a link. It's not gonna be the um, pendant version. Okay, and then before, before I start wrapping, I want to make sure that I get this on to my other bead, okay? So I'm gonna grab wire. You can use smaller gauge wire if you like. And then I'm going to do a wire wrap around that bead. So we will hold this. Just gonna do a couple wraps. Sorry, camera's right in front of where I need to grab. Okay, um, I'm gonna place my bead back on the wire. And then we will figure it, we'll fix this a little bit and wire wrap this. Gonna snip that. We'll do another wrap. I'll fix this part in just a moment to make sure it's facing the right way. Hey Christine. You missed me on the struggle bus after I made the bracelet, but we've gotten the, the, the train back on the track. <laughs> and then um, we'll go ahead and just wire wrap the top. And then you can add your um, ear wire afterwards. Do that, grab it. Sorry, I'm getting the trying to get the camera to focus on this and not the the remains of our bead strands on the in the back but I think we're doing it. And then if you'd like, you can come down the bead with the wire. I'm just gonna leave it like this because I really wanna be able to see the beads. Um, we're gonna cut it, trim it in the back. I wanna make sure we know where the back is. Here's the back. I'm gonna fix this part in just a moment. All right, so we'll snip back here. and then we'll just straighten out our beads. So here's the back, or you, if you really like how that um, silver looks against the crystal, you can keep that as the front. But I want to make sure, like this doesn't look right, right here. So we wanna make sure we fix that. We can just do that by curling a little bit. And you can use also use um, some nylon jaw wire or nylon jaw pliers so you don't mar your wire while you're working with it. Okay, and you can always add on a little bit more wire too if you'd like a messier wrap. But I think I really like how these turned out. So there's that guy, he's so sparkly. 
This, I would probably want to make this loop a little bit smaller in the future, but we just hang this on a, an ear wire and we made two different types of earrings today. So here's this guy. This is the struggle bus piece. If, for those of you just joined, when you watch back, you're going to shake your head a little bit. But um, we have our really sparkly pair. And then we have our sunset bracelet, which I'm obsessed with. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We went a whole hour. <laughs> Sorry, part of that was a little bit of a mess. But I hope everybody enjoyed what they saw today. Um, yeah, and... If you aren't already a follower of my um, Facebook page, it's Brittany's Beads. If you don't already follow me on YouTube, it's Turquoise Street, and you'll be seeing me use a lot of these beads in the future. Aw, thanks, Trudy. Thanks, Debbie. You guys are so sweet. I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your night. Bye-bye.